as I said, some of them are more difficult to figure out than others. Um, so the goal here was not necessarily for you all to get a right answer, but I'm curious sort of what kinds of things, what kind of questions did you ask yourself? What kind of information did you need to look for? Materials, what's it made out of? Okay. Do you recognize any of the parts? How else did you try and think things through? Well, well, if it's very ornate, it was made for people who had income oh. to buy it. So some of these are like this one is very it's decorated, it's painted. So you think about the audience as well, kind of who is this made for? Okay. How about can we go uh, model by model? In group number one, what did you think your piece was? It's a burglary system. It's going to shoot bad guys if they open the door. We open the door to the gun shoots. Okay. Okay. So in this one, you open the door and the gun shoots. Okay. That was one of the, yes. The theft prevention device, when a thief or intruder entered from the other side of the door, the weighted chain attached to the door released the cocked hammer of the loaded pistol, which discharged at the intruder. The next one, I think, is one of the more challenging ones. 1888. Does anyone have any idea? We did it, right? Is that number two? Yes. yes. It's a fence builder. Okay, how did you tell? Um, if you look at, we, we thought it was a barbed wire, Linda thought it was a barbed wire machine maker because we saw the wire getting twisted and then you see the wires getting twisted around pieces of wood. And then you can just sort of see that it like push, it, use that big hook to push the boards through after they get slid into the wire. Yeah, you see the fence essentially coming out this end of the machine. Yeah. Okay, that's absolutely what it is. This contraption automatically twisted the wires around the fence posts that were fed by hand into the machine. This is one of the few models that showed the finished project product emerging from the machine. So of course the real thing in this case would be a lot bigger. Uh, number three is a bit of a trick question one. What did we think number three was? Um, we thought it was just like a mobile cotton gin. The fact that you say it's a trick question, I guess yeah. we, we, uh, <laughs> we didn't get it. <laughs> so everyone, everyone is so familiar with the cotton gin that as soon as you see cotton, you go right to that. Um, and it certainly has to do with cotton, but it's a cotton seed planter rather than a kind of cotton harvester that pulls the... So um, it says, the seeds were poured into the top of the planter. The pins on the rotating shaft prevented the seeds from clogging while funneling them downward as the farmer pushed the planter along a plowed furrow. Um, model number four is the one someone pointed out is maybe made for a, a wealthier audience. It's less utilitarian, more um, attractive. But any idea what it was? We're guessing a bad version of a crock pot. <laughs> it has like a little lever at the bottom so you can adjust what the flame is going to be and how hot it will keep your food. It has like the opening at the top of the steam to come out. Okay. Or it could be or for potpourri. Yeah. It says smell, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're thinking like yummy food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you hear at the flame part? You have the bit at the bottom, you connect it to the Are we flame. right? You're on the, on oh! The <laughs> not on the, the front part, but on the flame <laughs> bit. Is it an incense? Small oil burner inside the base ignited a fuse that was connected to a metal container under the removable cover of the urn. A powdered incense placed in the container then burned, emitting a pleasing odor through the openings in the cover. Um, okay, number five was the most challenging. What was your thought process? How did you try and tackle it? Uh, well, we started just by trying to figure out like, the shape and what it was made out of. And then from there, we just got lost and started talking about submarines and submersibles. <laughs> <laughs> what led you from the, the shape and materials to the idea of a submersible? Uh, the idea? The portholes, uh -huh. the, the metal bands around it. I mean, I, I think we got kind of sidetracked this idea of pressure. It's got a door, and then there's this red herring. It was invented in Brooklyn, and we started, I, I, had this, I got totally focused on this idea that it might have been a submersible to dig the, the support pilings for the Brooklyn Bridge, and then then at the very end, we're like, maybe it's actually this size, and we're... <laughs> 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 it's actually, because the, the clue is Mayday, and so I had zero idea. There's like, it, it has an opening hatch, which Scott was pointing out, but it also has a door on one side, the portholes, it was... Yeah, I mean, scale is a huge challenge, right? Because all these models have to be scaled to, for display, but it could be any size. Um, so the answer is, it's a life-preserving container. 
Um, after the occupants, so occupants plural, entered the container through the door at one end, it automatically detached from its fastenings on the deck as the ship sank. The floating container was fitted with three bunks for sleeping, compartments for water and provisions, and a sliding hatch cover on top that could be open for light and air. So this is meant to be kind of an example of kind of object-based learning. How do you take an object, you have no idea what it is, and kind of logic through um, what you're doing. The process is a little bit different with art, as you may have seen, but you're still sort of taking an object you don't necessarily know the background information on, and getting as much out of it as you can just by looking. 